You should be asleep. I'm in your dreams. Do it for all your dreams. Make it happen. It's so amazing to watch you come alive. Do it for all your dreams. Make it happen. This is so real. Feel it with your love. You say hello. I'm alone, chasing shadows, was on my own, feeding my demise. Yes, I was blind, and I couldn't see, you were next to me, just standing close to me. Do it for all your dreams, make it happen, it's so amazing, to watch you come alive. Do it for all your dreams, make it happen. is all that crazy stuff hey guys if you happen to look online ahead of time you'll see this is about what is a pure salvage outpost and the reason I'm putting this up here is because some people still don't seem to know what it is or understand the concept of it so I'm gonna do a breakdown so I broke it down there's a wall back there laying on the side there's a wall over here laying on the side and there's a wall here laying forward and there's a wall over here laying on the side. And in the middle, spelled backwards, because I looked on here and I can't turn it around like a guy said I could. But, pure salvage outposts, what are they? Okay. Well, what they are is it's a place where you can build. It's going to have, this in the old days, in the old days, what's the old days? See these tools? This is your old um, ads. You'd make your boards out of a log with an ad. And that's a hand auger. And I've got logs I use where they actually hand augered with a drill bit, a hole. And then they use these chisels on the wall to chisel out the squares. And that way you can put one board inside of another when they cut it off with their handsaw. And there's a handsaw before the power tool days. And, uh, and then there's little axes. And this is a blade. This is a draw knife. And that's how you would flatten your boards out with a draw knife in the old days. So this is actually... A huge um, number of tools. If you had all those tools once upon a time, you was a carpenter. Nowadays, we have these other things. This is a bandsaw and a table saw. Um, those are real handy. Except now we also have uh, over here our desk with a typewriter. How many of you out there have actually seen a typewriter? This is an old one where you actually have to push the handle. And it turns it up around, and you type again, and you turn the handle, and type again. Fun. And then over there is a drafting table. If you can see it. you got to have a drafting table someplace to draw. In case you want to do cartoons in your little outpost. So what it amounts to is a little office area, just like in the old days. That would be on that side of the building. It's not a very big building, actually, because these are on the sides, because actually you're going to try to still be able to build some stuff in the middle of this little building. So in other words, you have a little office, you have a little drafting area on the wall, you have some pictures of the things you're going to do, and then you have your tools over there on the other side, and your saws. You don't need very many things, actually, to build tiny houses. Table saw is really handy, though. I also have up on the, on the shelf over here, I have uh, some power tools. Yeah, i got to have those power tools. And so your windows on this side are really high, because you just want wind and airflow but you don't want to break your windows out with stuff and you want the wall space to be able to store stuff on so you have one high wall and then you'll notice the other wall is not a high wall it's actually got some glass and some windows and some entrance and that's so that you can go ahead and if you had to even make a um effectively an entrance where people come in see what you're doing and leave out the front without getting into the middle the middle is where i got all this stuff written down and then here's where you're working at now over here, I've got drawn on here a window and a door at one end because you only need to have this for, oh, there's a table. Why is that table so important? Because that's where the old guys got to sit down and watch and talk and tell you all what to do. Because you're all working over here in this area. 
You know, when you're all done, you open up these giant doors and you roll the house out. And then you put it outside where you can finish it once you get it dried in. Hey, Lori. Work with the hands by the sweat of your brow. What a blessing we find in the strength of now. Absolutely, absolutely. It is just so, so very important on these outposts that you understand it's a place where everybody's going to get together. And I've got some little notes on there. For example, um, you might say the wisdom of a pure salvage outpost is a product of the experience and the knowledge. That's what wisdom is. Knowledge and experience combined. And hopefully a positive, learned conclusion that you can then share with somebody. Uh, but they won't ever get the wisdom unless they get the experience. Because you can go to school all, you, all your life, go to college. Get out of college, what's the first thing they ask you? How much experience you got? Uh, I ain't got any, I've been going to school. So, how much experience you got? None. Oh, darn. Well, when you get some experience, come on back. I always wanted to ride heavy equipment, drive heavy equipment, and get a job doing heavy equipment. And every time I say, I want to do that, they say, how much experience you got? None, but I'm a fast learner. Not on my equipment, you're not. That was the answer. It stands true, I'm going to tell you, it stands true. So... The idea behind having one of these um, outposts is that you'll be able to go ahead then and have all your tools. You might have several different guys come together with their tools. So you really don't have to buy any. The guys that come help out will store their tools there, which is I recommend you have tool cabinets built on that wall. See, now this is for honest people. This is an honest people tool wall. Honest people tool walls mean everybody there is honest. They take the tool away and they're still honest. They might forget to bring it back. That's not the kind of honest person I want. I want the honest person to come bring my tool back and put it right back on that spot. You know why? Because if it's not there, I'm going to spend an hour looking for it. I'd much rather spend an hour building something than looking for my darn tools. One of my pet peeves. My daddy taught me, he said, there's a, what, a place for everything and everything in its proper place. I spent my whole life and haven't been able to accomplish that, but I'm still trying. And especially annoys me when other people don't do it. Because it's my stuff and I need it. When I need it. Not down the road when you tell me, oh, it's in the truck that's not over here. So, what this says is, and you can't read it because it's backwards. I'm going to read it to you. Aren't I nice? It says, our wisdom is in the ideas, the people plans in the community because you can't do it all yourself and if you do who's there to appreciate it for who are you doing it for just you I'll tell you what you won't feel near as good just doing it for you as you will if you do it for other people this I can promise you now you hear that creaky door that's how I know if somebody came in or not. In this case, it's my dog, Rocky, who went out. Luckily, it's not important. So, one of the things I've got on here is the windows. Ding, windows. You can actually get the windows as part of your pure salvage outpost package. Big, beautiful windows, antique glass, probably six, eight foot tall windows you want on the front, make it kind of fun. A nice big door with a nice big screen. That's supposed to be a screen. You don't want a screen door if you can do it. So there's going to be a couple big windows for the front of it. And there's going to be windows um, for the back of it. Up high windows. And I've got even industrial windows. Big old three foot by three foot cool old windows. Nine pane windows. i got tons of them to go ahead and send out. And then I've got for this end over here. Oh, the other end over there. That's going to be where you're going to... Have the good old boys sit at, look at it all. There's your, can't already see it, out the window. See those little houses? That's the village. Tiny village out the window. Anyway, that's where you take your houses. As you roll them out the door, you put them on trailer. And you pull them out there with a tractor. And you set them up out in the fields. As long as you don't have to go down the road, you don't have to have a permit. So you can take them and build them in here and haul them out to the back. 
and put them together. If you make them big, you put two pieces together, or you make a big trailer and haul it with a tractor. And a trailer is not that hard to make, guys. I've seen houses hauled on pipe, resting and chained onto axles. It is easy, easy, easy to move houses. So, I can even show you how to build skates. So, you put them on skates and you just make a couple of uh, sidewalks about two foot wide. And you put the skates on the sidewalk and you put the house on the skates and then you're ready. We literally had one woman push the house out. That's how much effort it took. We had six guys on. I said, wait a second, guys. That looks a little bit like you're faking there. Because they were all getting paid $10, $15 an hour to help. So they all wanted to help. Uh, I have another video out there someplace where I did that. There's six guys. I said, wait a minute. And I said, I can prove I can move that by myself. And so we filmed it. And once you put that house on skates, I moved a 23,000-pound house by my itty-bitty self without even having good handles. So... What you can do with an outpost is get it all dried in. And as long as, say, for example, I made this as seven foot wide um, doors. So you really have about a foot or so of uh, maybe two foot on the sides. Um, I'm figuring on generally you're going to build about a 16 foot wide building if you can. 18, 20 if you get the beams. If you get the length of the beams to do the rafters with or if you can get. Because you got to be open. Yeah, that's the hard part. Ideally, you want to have this where you can build the house inside and go up to about 14 foot of house. That gives you the ability to make a six foot two in the second floor at the peak, which is what I'm kind of fond of because I'm six foot one, uh, six foot one. Yeah, I know. I'm not as not as tall as I used to be. Shucks. But anyway, that aside, uh, my bottom floor, the ceiling is generally about uh, six foot eight six foot six to the beam and seven foot to the floor upstairs that allows you to get two full-size floors inside of my tiny houses instead of having that coffin loft so the design is important that's called space magic design the stairwells you've seen probably i've designed um well, probably 40 different kinds of stairwells including one with a bar underneath it with locked doors so the kids couldn't get into the bar um, we've done them with uh oh even lighting led lighting that was a beautiful one had it where the window opened up and the bar so you give people drinks out on the porch and let them get nice and drunk and fall off the porch instead. Anyway, um, but the idea is that we can go ahead and keep coming up with really cool different ways of doing things. And um, um, every outpost then will have all these great artists coming up with the coolest, coolest stuff with the materials that we can send them. And when they get it built, if they end up sell it for a bunch of money, well, we get some of the money back and they get a bunch of money. And the local outpost gets money. And so it's the kind of thing where if you want money, there's lots of money to be made. Millions of dollars of money to be made as long as there's money out there. And you want money, you can make it. But that's not the path to happiness. So this is about the path to happiness and the money just has to be a cool thing on the sidelines. Anybody who's coming into this just for the reason of getting money, well... You can still get money, but that's not the reason I want to help you. If you're just coming in for money, I'm not here to help people just coming in for the money of it. The money is necessary to, to pay for an ideology. It's necessary to feed people. It's necessary to, to help pay for all the stuff you're going to need. But I don't want to send a bunch of stuff to somebody who's just going to sell it for god-awful big fortune of profit and keep it all and say thank you very much and not pay the people that are helping them much and... And just treat everybody like crap. We don't want to help those kind of people. We want to help somebody who needs the help, wants to form a little community. Um, there's uh, Chris George and then Tina and all these people that, that, that need to get linked up with somebody else. They can't do it by themselves. Because um, it's not easy. Even if you got the land, it's not easy to do it by yourself. If you got the, the money to build houses, you still got to have the land. And then you got to have land in the right place. And, uh, and there's a lot of complications on that part. We have talked about that. You got to watch these videos. As hard as it is, sometimes people complain, I can't watch it. And I know admittedly, sometimes it's bad reception um, on your internet. Sometimes it's just bad reception in between the ears and they don't want to spend the time to watch and learn. I highly recommend you do. Spend some time. Watch. Learn. If you don't like what I have to say, go verify, validate it. You know what I say? They don't want to let you stay in old... RV parks with old RVs. Even the old RV parks, you still have to have new RVs. Um, this is just part of the insurance and all the code that goes with having an RV park. 
I mean, you can actually own the RV park, but that doesn't mean you can make the rules. You have to have the city come in and make the rules for you. Unless you're way out in the country. And you have to be really far out in the country because as soon as you start adding a bunch of people together and you start calling it a town or a group of people together, then there's counties wanting to get in there about what are you doing with your waste, your septic systems, and all that. So the idea behind having an outpost to start with, especially if you can do it where there's already a bathroom and there's already electricity or there's a hookup, because this is going to be like your main house. So you could have a lot of tiny houses out there that don't have bathrooms in them. But if your main place up here right next to your outpost, you decide to go ahead and add a kitchen with a bathroom and showers, that's a good place to put it. Up near the road, maybe, where the septic and the water are available, but not in the back of the property. On the properties in, that we have access to utilities in the front, and the quandary is, where do we put them all? If we put them in the front, they're too close to the highway, or they're too close to the road or something. So you want to put them in the back. So the outpost, outpost is to give you the front facility where the power is and everything and then you can be selling stuff it's up near the road where you're gonna have traffic to sell your wares if you're artists making furniture and stuff like that um so you want to have the utilities and everything you possibly have up at the front and carry as little of it back because it's ten thousand dollars for that yeah ten thousand dollars for the transformer to get you about 300 foot back into a field using poles, telephone poles, depending on where you're at, they can cost you a grand or two a piece. And so you're looking at 10 grand to get 350 yards back into your property. And that's a long way. That's a thousand feet, but it's still 10 grand. You, gotta, you have to get the other transformer at that point. So if you put your outpost way back there, you got to have that transformer there to make sure that when the power gets back there, the transformer's and this is only for 110. If you do 220, it's even more expensive because you got to have two transformers back there. One makes the one phase, and the other one makes the other phase, so that you get 220. So you can work the 60 on a high. If you don't know about electricity, this is not a good time to teach you. But the point is, you can run most of your tools on 110 volts. So if you want to put your outpost way back a thousand foot off the road, and you can get the, or you already have a, a, a big transformer back there. Then you can put your outpost in the back. Otherwise, these outposts have to go up near the front where the power is closest, where there's a transformer within, I'd say generally about two or three hundred feet or yards. You get to yards and you start losing too much current. And that causes your power tools to burn out faster. Electronics go haywire. Um, if you're running a long distance, three or four hundred yards out to where your supply is, and you got your radio hooked up and you're trying to charge your phones and all that stuff and you got your laptop on there, there's a good chance you're going to fry them all. It's going to create so much static and run the voltage so low. Low voltage will burn out your electronics. It will cause major problems in your tools. And all these people want to run their tools on generators, like an outpost. Oh, I want to run it on a generator. Yeah, a generator creates an artificial AC current, alternating current. And it is, um, if it's a cheap, alternating current conversion system it has too many spikes in it and it will chew up your ac power tools your corded power tools are supposed to run on ac electricity alternating current so if you run them on dc current and they're not a battery you know battery is great it runs on direct charge off those lithium batteries to charge up but when you do a generator it creates a dc direct current and then converts it to an alternating current for the purposes of running tools and fooling the tool into thinking it's something it's not. It wears the tool out much faster, especially if you run over long distance over thin cords. Because again, it's DC current. It doesn't like to run over long distances. Direct current runs short distances very well. Long distances, nah. That's why they came up with alternating current to run it down the wires. So for Morgan's sake, because he owned all the coppers. They didn't want Tesla to succeed in giving us electricity through the air because he couldn't charge for wire. That's stupid if you want to make a bunch of money off a bunch of fools. You don't give them electricity for free where you can't meter it. So Tesla learned about economics and how you can't have a great idea and make people a bunch of money for free like I'm trying to do. Yeah, why would I want to do that? Because Tesla didn't do so good at that, did he? Hmm. Anyway, we're still giving it a try. Anyway, I like the guy. I think he did a heck of a job. 400 amp service is good, Lori. Um, 
If you split it up, you've got um, the ability to still, same problem, 400 amps won't run down that wire past a certain distance. It's the, not the amperage you have at the service. It's the distance you try to run the current over after it reaches your breaker box. And this is something you got electricians around that'll explain more about it to you. But if you're going to run from one breaker box to the next breaker box, you got to run thick wire so you can run lots of amperage on it. And as you run that distance, there's all sorts of cool formulas that tell you that if you go, say, 300 feet or 300 yards, the difference between the size of wire you need to run 50 amps 300 yards is dramatic, as in the size of my finger, not the casing, the wire. If you want to pull 50 amps 300 yards, and you may not have 50 amps when you get there of 110 volts. You may have 90 volts. 95 volts, 100 volts, and a lot of things will run on that voltage. But electronics, whoa. Computers, no. Anything with sensitive electronics, you cannot run low voltage, and you're not a good idea to convert DC to AC and then run power tools on the same thing because it creates a real heavy static. And if you turn it on, it runs the voltage super low. And it will trash any other electronics. In fact, my chargers, my battery chargers were on the same line. And even that causes me problems when my AC is on there. Plugged a real AC, but it's plugged to the line. And as the current goes low, it's blowing out my battery chargers on my DeWalt. It's $60 a pop. <laughs> so leave your battery charger plugged in back at the power supply where it's safe near the house. And don't run out on your 300-foot extension cord and plug your power chargers for your batteries in and think you're, you're doing great because you're not. You're not. Well, if you like buying new battery chargers, you're doing okay, but the expensive ones are $120 for a good battery charger that has the fans on it, will hyperspeed charge a DeWalt 60 amp, 20 amp special battery, or the 5 amp per hour, which is the ones I like to run, the big ones, instead of those little 1 amp hour because that's not much power you're going to burn out your batteries quickly and gripe and get pissed off because it won't drive your screws in okay that's it for the moment on the pure salvage outposts i didn't think there would be a lot of people there thank you Lori. i'm glad you all up here you're supposed to be asleep it's supposed to be in your dreams uh yeah that that 15 amps meters on those rv hookers by the way Oh, good. You got somebody on board this electrician. Wonderful, man. That is super good, Lori. I'm a, um, I was trained back in the days of the Army. Um, back when we did computers, there were 220 volts and looked like filing cabinets, four drawers high, that couldn't do math. Or really, no, they didn't have a light on them. They were stupid big computers, crypto computers. We made crypto code with them. Dinosaurs, absolute dinosaurs. You wouldn't bother. I mean, there would be scrap metal nowadays, just pure scrap metal. Anyway, okay. Um, Lori's got a bunch of stuff going on, about ready to go ahead and have a bunch of people come out there. And we've got another group in Houston. We've got another group um, of Essenes that are going to be opening up in the Hill Country. I think we'll be helping them out, it looks like. Um, we've got a uh, shoot, there's. Um, Mike Davis is looking at some property, it looks like. Um, Chris up there, I don't know if he needs much stuff. He's so far north, but um, Chris George has got some people coming together that I know I'm working with. So maybe if they get up there, then we'll send materials up for them to help him out and be part of his community. Um, Y'all take a good night, and, and we'll get together again tomorrow, maybe. It's getting crazy outside. Volcanoes, earthquakes, pay attention. Be ready. Have your little prepared getaway bag handy if you need it i don't know where i'd run to i want to stay here i'll check out if you can't be here i'll just check out see you later